Hey guys, so today's video is a bit of a mashup of different green text pictures. So good screen caps. I yeah, thought they were funny. We'll have a lot um, of them, and they're too small to make a video out of, so we just mush them all into one. I will. I will warn you guys. The last story is um, it's bad. It's bad. It, in, it involves furry and a lot of Vaseline, but you'll just get there. <laughs> Best magical item you ever had or created. Mine was something referred to as the Wonder Golem, or Amazo. Amazo for short. <laughs> nice. It started off as a clunky golem which my sorcerer and a fellow destructive nutjob who happened to own a magic shop had laden down with everything from the shop we didn't want to carry with us while fleeing the enemy army. The only instructions we gave it were something along the lines of sick em. It nearly turned us to stone the second we turned it on and it did turn about 40 enemies to stone. During its first round of existence, it conjured tornadoes and magical death even healed the enemies who lived through its attacks now and then. But what really started to give it its power were the wishes. Amazmo rolled randomly on the huge list of artifacts we borrowed <laughs> from the country's predominant magical storage areas to do its attacks, and it just kept hitting wishes. Its first wish turned it into a well-articulated killing machine. No clunky shambling. It strode across the field of battle like death incarnate. But the saga of Amazmo was far from over. As it brought death and destruction to those in front of it, my sorcerer and the shopkeeper began fleeing like scared rabbits, looking back at every opportunity they got to see more badassery. And then the unthinkable happened. It began hitting the holy items that we put into it. Now, neither myself nor the shopkeeper were religious, which meant Amazmo didn't so much call upon the gods' assistance as rip their powers from the heavens and make it its own. After the next instance of miracle, he was a killing machine without peer. Fluid steel that strode across the battlefield with grace unmatched by man or a golem. He then teleported to the abandoned city we were trying to hide in, and summoned a bunch of their elder elementals. There was a lot of running and screaming at that point, but soon his attention turned back to the army, in time to see four ancient dragons on the horizon, and to get another wish. Which turned him into a dragon equal in size and shining like the purest mithril. He kicked off the ground and began to kick the shit out of the dragons, until one of the riders, who happened to basically be a demigod by this point, knocked him to the ground. And then Amazmo was done, not by the hand of the enemy, but by his own breath weapon, also randomly rolled. Miracle Breath. It took the combined players of about 200 people to summon up enough power to finally end him. And the explosion leaves a magical scar in the landscape, which will likely persist for eons. My sorcerer's deity slot is no longer blank. It now has one word in it. Amazmo. Well, you see, son, in the Lord of the Rings universe, there are five kinds of people. No powers, hero powers, magic powers, overpowered, and hilariously godly overpowered. You in the comments are going to take the piss of how I say power, but I don't Aye. care. And then there's Tom Bombadil. <laughs> he could have just walked danced into Mordor, punched Sauron in the face, I, kicked Melkor in the nuts, said everything right, and be back before lunchtime while wearing the ring as, pierce, as a piercing on his dick. <laughs> <laughs> if he only give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. There was, a, there was a really good one I read, or I came across the other day. Um, I can't remember what it was, but people were talking about, like, you know, where do hobbits come from? Because they're not mentioned in, like, you know, the origin story of, like, humans and elves and dwarves and stuff. Yeah. And I really buy into it that maybe it was Tom Bombadil that sang them into existence. Probably. Yeah, because he only, he only lives, like, beside them, but yeah. yeah, why have they never came in contact with him? Yeah. Um, it's very interesting. Definitely one to look into yourself, guys. I thought it was good. DC 80. Extremely tight space. This is the DC for getting through a space where one's head shouldn't even be able to oh fit. Oh my god, you know what? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this can be as small as two inches square for medium-sized creatures. Half this limit for each size category less than medium size. Double it for size category greater than medium size. If the space is long, such as a chimney, multiple checks may be called for. Oh. <sighs> Does this mean you can crawl up someone's anus on intestines with DC-80 escape artist check? <laughs> well, here, look, I am playing a Goblin Luke at the minute, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if Teal's been using many... I haven't had, we haven't seen any ogres in a while. Teal's going to be watching. Like, oh, God. No! No! <laughs> don't tempt me! <laughs> TG. 
This thread disturbs me because I used to work in a hospital. And yes, people come in every once in a while to get really weird stuff from me from their ass. Oh, for God's sake. What was that one forged through pain? What man from <laughs> jar? You don't want to know most of it, but one of the worst ones? 47 of these fucking things. What? Oh my god, they're, 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 they're blades for like, um, I'm going to say like a standing knife or like a cutting knife. Yeah, box cutter. I think Americans call yeah. them, isn't it? Please stop shoving stuff up your ass. Physicians are sick of removing <laughs> it. Our science requires us to move the stuff from your ass. Science demands you to shove it up your ass. <laughs> Think of your doctor, TG. Think of your doctor. I don't know. I've never I, like if any of you guys have ever had to go to the doctor by shoving something. Anytime up your I ass. think of like, people shoving stuff up their ass, is I think of um jackass and maybe jackass and maybe yeah. ran down shoving up a toy <laughs> toy car, yeah, toy car his ass. ass. Yeah. So guys, have you, I mean, you guys shoved anything up your ass and decided, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to go to the doctor. Doctor, about I'm this sorry, shit. But, I'm sorry, but I would, I, I, I just, I, 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 wouldn't have the nerve. No. Well, first of all, I wouldn't shove anything up my ass to begin with. I would just wait for. I would just take a little laxatives. And yeah. Just hope for the best. I, 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 I don't. I wouldn't have the nerve. No. I couldn't do. I couldn't myself. go to the doctor and be like, look, there's something in my ass. Can you put your fingers up and just have a look? <laughs> Get it out, please. <laughs> Scenario. On your way to your local game store, you find a Forge World Titan still in its box, laying on the side of the road. Later that day, a gamer chick comes into the store, crying how she lost her Titan and would be willing to be a sex slave for an entire day if it meant she could get it back somehow. What do you do? Um, <laughs> I mean, like, I would rather have the Titan, but that's just me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Give it back. Tell her that she doesn't even need to do the sex slave stuff. Returning it to her is a gift enough. Duh. Duh. <laughs> Give it back to her, no strings attached. I am really a white knight in real life. Give it back to her. Nothing needed in return except a 2000 point game. It would suck to lose a model. Probably give it back and ask her how she lost it. I'd give it back, no strings attached, because if she's insane enough to offer that, I don't want to be anywhere near her with my clothing off. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, yeah, that's the like, honestly. You're not wrong. Uh, you know, do, do you do you want to get uh, do you want to get sick this, guys? Or do you that... just want to get crazy? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> be all smooth, like, and be like, no need to whore yourself, but how about the date hot stuff while giving it back the Titan? Oh. Give it back and then play a couple of games with her because obviously any gamer chick who carries who cares enough about the game to get a Titan is probably pretty cool. Yeah, I'll give you credit, to be honest with you, not many people get them. Honestly, I'd give it back. It's Forge World, and I know how I'd feel if I lost something like that. And on the completely unrelated note, since when did we have mods? <laughs> 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 give it back and then compare armies. Also, drill a titan. I know how I'd feel if I lost a titan. You're all wimpy moral fags. That being said, I would do the same. Noble internet white knight, you have passed the test and proven your worth. There is no titan or girl. It was all an illusion to test your virtue. Take your seats beside me at the round table and in the, <laughs> in the name of God Almighty, help banish the long night and restore chivalry across the land. I will point out that this thread was from 2009. Um, if it was this day and age, it would be, if she breathes, she she's a thought! <laughs> Adverbly, guys. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. <laughs> so either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. <laughs> and, like, let's be serious, the models are pretty based looking, so... Once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. As related to me by fuck this, I'm getting tacos. Here's the story of the furry rape planet. <laughs> great, great. Furry rape planet, or how to solve problems with high explosives. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> a while back, I was bouncing from grip to grip. I hadn't found one I really liked, and my other grip was on hiatus. One of my friends said he found an alternative game, seeing as I hasn't played alternative in a long-ass time. 
and I like Alternity. I took him up on it. We were gaming at the GM's house. We get there, nice house. Smelled like lavender and Vaseline. Oh god. (laughs) (laughs) More on that later. We were greeted with ample food and snacks for the game, as a relatively normal group of five other players plus the GM. We hear some noises coming from a back room, and we were told that the owner's roommate is hosting a game. No way, he's got a gimp in the corner. You can find that he's got a gimp in the closet. (laughs) So, to the nitty gritty. We have a tech op who couldn't fix anything, another tech op who was a pilot, a mind walker, stereotypical psychic, a diplomat with a huge language score, and two combat specs. One was a strategist, and my character was the tough meat shield type. We were given orders from the company to take a ship from our home base to another planet in the system. Simple milk run, right? Nope. (laughs) Shit goes haywire. We lose all electronics while passing through a belt of fuzzy science and start descending towards a planet. Upon entering the upper atmosphere, we discover this planet has a layer of the ever-populated GM plot twist, this time in the form of metallic particles, and thus why it had never been explored. We lose control of the ship and end up belly sliding across the surface of the planet. We slide off a cliff, then do a barrel roll across a forest. We come to, and the ship is in many pieces, most of which are the size of a large dog or a small child, but the important part is mostly intact but cracked open like an egg. Our heroes emerge from the wreckage and start salvaging their wreck. First things first, who's hurt? Well, let's see. Our mind walker is unconscious. Our tech op pilot has broken nose and several broken ribs. Or Mr. Fixit has broken an arm, but that's it. Diplomat is unharmed. Strategist had a broken jaw, and myself had, and the GM verified it, a broken left leg and a broken right arm. This will be important later. But that I could use my rotary laser cannon as an impromptu crutch. This will also be important later. Those that are healthy enough to salvage supplies, salvage supplies. Eventually we get a camp set up, and we are arranged in a circle. At this point, the GM stops the game and brings in the other group. In comes three relatively normal looking people. Three land whales and one low orbiting ham planet. (laughs) More on the planet later. No joy, it's going to be one of those games. While our characters are in a circle discussing our next course of action, we are interrupted and told to make perception checks. We all pass, except for the mind walker, for obvious reasons. Even though we all pass, A self-described vixen in a simple tribal loincloth gently coughs to gain our attention. Now at first, it didn't really sink in what she had just described. I thought she was just using an adequate term for hottie. But no, she described herself as a 5 foot 4 anthro red fox with blue highlights and several piercings in her ears and nipples. Oh. Th- <laughs> oh my god, this is that meme, Megan, oh. when you're the most popular fox of the fur con. <laughs> At this point, the rest of her party shows up. We had one aforementioned red fox furry, two anthro huskies, one blue with green highlights, one purple with black highlights, two lions, one male, one female, a tiger that was female, and a hermaphroditic puma, <laughs> which the players described in sickening detail. <laughs> I have no words. I would be, I'd turn around to meet that invited me that, where did you find this game? <laughs> where was it, at, where, where was it advertised? Where did, <laughs> why are we here? Why are you got in? <laughs> well, be why are you gay? <laughs> why are you got in? They announced their plans to take us back to the campus sex. Oh my God. God. It just gets and, worse. Oh, why does it always start like that? Why do they do that? Why, why do they just think that's okay? Fuck it, that's just. At this point, I realise we had crashed into the planet of fucking furries, literally. As the party is being pursued, and as we flee, I'm suddenly told that I can't run away. I say I figure I can drag a broken leg and at least hobble away. I'm suddenly informed that no, I have a broken spine and can't move at all. Oh my god, he's gonna actually get my- why do they do this? So fine, I declare that I start firing my rotary laser (laughs) cannon. Nope, denied. It's now suddenly a shotgun. That's fine, I think. A gun's a gun, and I proceed to unload. Unfortunately, furries can dodge buckshot. A few of the furries try to rush me as my colleagues attempt to flee. The furries catch the other party members, most of whom are savagely wounded, remember, and proceed to rape them. I feel bad for the poor fellow that's knocked out. Oh god. (laughs) What are they doing (laughs) to him? This one guy's paralyzed. He's He's knocked out, isn't he? As they circle up to grab me, they pull my arms apart, 
and see a grapefruit-sized grenade-like sphere on my chest. They look at my hands and see a pin ring. The grenade goes off and so do they. I roll for damage and proceed to score enough damage to render myself and the furries grappling me into chunky salsa. Worthy, worthy, worthy decision. Uh-huh. A martyr of our time. It's a only... martyr of our time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this elects a massive grip temper tantrum from the furries. The furries moan and whine that what I have done is cruel. <laughs> You're the one Good. trying to like, raping people. Good. To which I reply, so is raping a cripple. <laughs> 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 this elects yet more whining and blubbering from the ham planet. The GM then suddenly decides that the explosion only sends me flying back into the hollow of a tree. Oh my god, you didn't even let you die. The furries were somehow able to dodge the explosion and escapes only with a couple of singed tails as the GM describes it. Now that I'm in the hollow of the tree, they have me pinned, as they describe how they are going to walk up and rape me. I proceed to pull out my pistol. I roll for damage and describe how I have now placed the pistol in my mouth and pulled the trigger, <laughs> to which they are stunned. The furries scream, they cry, they bitch and moan. I grab my stuff and my buddy who has had to endure graphic descriptions of how the other two furries were raping his character this whole time <laughs> and leave. Good boy. <laughs> One more thing. When we got to the front door, we discovered why we had smelled Vaseline when we first entered. The inner door handle was... <gasps> no way! Oh, my, my god! god. They, they tried to trap him? Did they tra- Did they actually try and... Oh my god, no. Do you god, think he no. was actually going to get ripped that night? I th- I think that they were going to make like, oh no, this is going to be like hot. We're going to like... It's we're going gonna... to turn into an orgy. Yeah, that's that's probably what they were wanting. Or, or somebody was fucking the door handle. Nah, I think that I think they were trying to set this up and like make it like a. Or somebody was fucking the door handle. I wouldn't put a pass for furry <laughs> so. Oh my god. There you have it, the furry rape planet. Probably one of the most horrific stories ever posted on TG. I still remember when Tacos first told it to me. My jaw literally hit the floor. I was stunned. I could not, would not believe that people this creepy actually exist. Yet. No, you've never are. met furries before. No. Like, people guard at us all the time, being like, oh, oh why are you so... All you do is shout at furries. Why are you so against it? sounds like... Uh, um, mm, no, this well, is I like... don't know. A lot of the furries I've came in contact with are definitely... Cringe and creepy. Uh, you know, some of them are kind of funny. I will admit, I've came across a few that are kind of funny. But for the most part, it's like me. You, you need to calm down on all that sex stuff for five months. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You need to, you need to, you need to calm that down there, mate. Just saying. I don't know, this one's pretty brutal. Have you, any guys ever thought you'd never got molested? Like, I think this guy was going to get molested. Like, like, so close. Well, why, why are you rubbing Vaseline all over your door handle? I know. What's that about, mate? <laughs> I'm going to assume it's like a line door handle. Yeah. So it'll be hard to twist. Oh. Oh, my God. Well, guys, have any of you guys almost got molested by a group of furries? <laughs> Just asking, you know. Um, never came across it myself personally. But there's a. Uh, I there's smell a... furries in the comments coming in. We're all like that. We're I not swear. All like that. We swear. We swear. Um, no, tell, tell us if you've ever came in contact with this. Like, you know, anything weird, anything unusual. Or just give us some. Or if you just want to tell us a weird story down below. Yeah. yeah. Just whatever. This was a bit of a mashup. Yeah. It was just, it was too, like, I had them all sitting here and I was like, well. I'd rather do them. I think they're funny. Let's just go with it. And as always, check out the links. Check out our website. Uh, go and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we post. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.